Hey, before we start today, I want to thank a bunch of folks who sent me some Christmas cards that Barb forwarded fee forwarded to me from from uh, Athens. Uh, there were some other Christmas cards that got forwarded, but they went to Bethesda and they got lost in the mail for a little while. I don't know if they've gotten there yet or not, so I haven't gotten everything yet, okay? But these are some cards that I did get. Thank you so much. Have yourself a spectacular Christmas. Val. Val has been very kind. Thank you so much, Val, for all the wonderful stuff she sent us. The hat, uh, the, the tie, the glow ball, a lot of cool stuff. And she sent some stuff to Barb and to Craig, too. Val in Washington State. Thank you so much. I also want to thank, uh, look at that card. Isn't that a nice card? Holiday Memories, Mrs. Dale, Ms. Dale in Tucson. Isn't that nice? Thank you so much. Look at this. Oh, the, yeah. And that's uh, Camo Dave. Thanks for your friendship, Aaron. That's Aaron, the producer of the Cami Awards, and his lovely wife, Lori. And there we have another one. Thank you so much. Happy New Year. W-L-W-A-L. Roland. Roland Clark. It looks like Roland Clark, right? I got that right? I don't know. Sorry if I got your name wrong. Anyway, and then this one. Beautiful one. Isn't that gorgeous? And, uh, oh, oh, yeah, and, uh, and yeah, this one's from Tasmod! <laughs> and a number of these cards had a little bit of, had some cash in them. So I did go out and buy a lighting system for my new apartment and a small television set because I, you know, like to watch the evening news. But uh, thank you so much. I do appreciate all that. And uh, we got some more Christmas cards that were forwarded to Bethesda, which I probably won't get to see for another week or two. And then there's some more Christmas cards that were being forwarded here to my sister's place in Manassas. And they should get here on Monday or Tuesday before I leave on Wednesday. So hopefully, cross the fingers. So we're, we're getting through the cards. But thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And to all the other folks who sent me very nice Christmas wishes on my in my comments and at the Camo David GMX dot com and via email and on the text messages on the uh on the on the phone on the Camo Dave hotline five seven one four one nine zero four six three. Now it's time for lettuce. Oh yeah. Hey, letters, 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 letters for the twenty eighth of December, twenty nineteen. In regards to nomadic dating, writes T writes D Taylor Stevens. Line screw one says. Don't send me a picture of you. Send me a picture of your RV. <laughs> you, well, yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Holly M says, OMG, Dave, you brought back Tina from the Twilight Zone. Now the PTSD is from my youth is all flooding back. I think the uh, name of the episode was The Living Doll. It had Telly Savalas in it. Yes, it's one of my favorite Twilight Zones ever. She, he buys this doll for his little girl. It's one of these talky dolls, talky Tina. And then the doll starts, like, saying threatening things to the daddy. And the daddy starts to go crazy. And the daddy tries to get rid of the doll. And then the doll keeps coming back. And the doll gets revenge at the end. Good, it's a good episode. <laughs> Raymond Driggers says, Wow, I was just in Manassas. Would have loved to, to get a selfie with you. Uh, uh, with you spent the night at a rest stop where there's a lot of construction. There is a rest stop right here on I-66 where there is a lot of construction out there. You spent the rest, you spent the night there? I don't know, man. We got a couch. You could have, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Give me a call. <laughs> Todd Schreiber writes, Hey, Camo, can you tell us if Puddin was married to Lonnie or Lori? <laughs> if Puddin was married to Lori a year ago, he had mentioned that he made a mistake months ago. Lori then said she split up with her boyfriend in Arizona. It The, the, piece, the puzzle pieces appeared to fit. Check it out. I don't know. Anybody know about uh, Puddin and Lori's history? Bite me, right? You can't blame these people who are trying to get an RV and start up a YouTube channel figuring they will never have to work again. I don't think it's that. I really don't think it's not. You know, I'll be honest with you. I watch a lot of nomads and it's hard work. It is hard work. It is not easy to live like a nomad. It just isn't, whether it's in your van, your RV, whatever. 
it's a lot of work. You know, there's, there is a lot of work involved here. In different places, you're constantly, you, you know, it, it, there's a lot of aspects of living on the road that are a lot harder than living in a sticks and bricks apartment or whatever. And, you know, and in that constant movement and that constant, you know, adjusting to new places and, and then supporting yourself. You know, I'm not saying, I don't think these people are lazy or, you know, that kind of thing. I do think to some degree they might be misguided in thinking that if they can't afford things that there's this giant YouTube community that will help them out every time they need it. I don't know. You know, if you get thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of subs, you know, you can, you know, there's much more chance that you can make some money at this thing and maybe, maybe a living wage on it. But, you know, it, it's not easy. And uh, I, I, da I dare say the people aren't lazy, but they, I think a lot of them are very misguided about, you know, whether they really can make a living on the road. Aaron Olofsson says, why do people waste time with frivolous lawsuits tying up the courts? Uh, Sue so happy people need to get a jobby poo. Sue so happy people. Uh, uh, first off, you can sue anybody you want. Okay. Second off, you're not going to necessarily win. Uh, I don't know. People just like, I think it makes them get, they scare people. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you. I don't know. It takes, you know, to sue somebody for slander and libel takes an awful lot of research and an awful lot of money. And, you know, and if the, you have to prove damages, you do. And, you know, in most of these cases, I can't see any damages at all other than their YouTube channel grew and they got more subs because of it. Uh, Valusa says element van life should have been packing. Well, you know, somebody pops out your window and you scare them off. I don't think most, you know, you're, it, that's not really. I don't I don't know uh, uh, when you're talking about armed defense of yourself if you're in a vehicle and someone breaks your window they're not they haven't actually entered your vehicle do you have the right to defend yourself i don't know it depends i think it depends on the state you're in and i don't know about california <laughs> but i don't know if somebody had come in the vehicle entered the vehicle and had a, and looked like they had a weapon and nate element van life was there you know that's a whole different thing but if they haven't actually entered the vehicle just broken a window I don't know that. I don't know. You know, lawyers can argue about that. Yeah, we're all, more comments about Element Van Life's broken window there. Gothic Child reminds me of the smashed window and the stolen camera equipment that happened to Bama Mike last year. If thieves put as much effort into getting an education and career goals as they do into stealing and damaging other people's property, they would actually have jobs and the property of their own common sense. Jeez. Yeah, but that was also, that was, a, you know, a non-occupied vehicle. I think that's a bit of a different story. But it does amaze me that, you know, in a parking lot that looked fairly busy where Nate was, somebody could just do that and nobody saw it. You know, somebody smashing a window. Everybody's got a phone and a camera. You think somebody would take a picture of the suspect. And the other one was uh, Bama Mike. They were, they were parked in a parking garage in Atlanta. You know, I mean, you think they'd have cameras on virtually all over the place. You know, you think, you know, especially in a ca in a parking lot, in, the, in a parking deck in the daytime that's fairly crowded, you think you wouldn't have anything to worry about. But I guess people just are scared and want to mind their own business. And if they see that happening, they just look away. Uh, Evolution Van Life, uh, Nate, didn't beg for donations, writes uh, Jan Janian, Janina Carter. He just went out and got it fixed, question mark. Okay, yeah, yeah, he did. Maybe he has insurance, I'm sure, but you don't, you know, if it's just a busted window and you, you know, the insurance probably has a deductible and if the insurance pays, then your rates go up. It might just be easier for you just to get it fixed. I don't know, cost of... You know, what, whatever. You know, rock comes up and hits your windshield and it shatters. What do you do? I don't know. Uh, Betty has insurance but didn't want this premium to go up. That's how uh, somebody ought, uh, that's how it ought to be. It's called being prepared. Uh, some of these nomads out there could learn from his, from this guy. He calls him a kid or she calls him a kid. He's a guy. Yeah, he did, but he's 30-something, right? Something taught him responsibility. That's right. You have a little extra money for stuff like that. It's going to happen. It's called an emergency fund. You don't go out on the road with no money. And then your brakes go out or your whatever conks out or your window shat gets shattered. And, you know, you got to have some money. 
you know, and that you got to have a backup fund and you can't, you know, and it is almost somewhat irresponsible to just assume, don't worry, <laughs> PayPal. And finally, we hear from Lily Gazoo, Gazow, Gazoo. I wasn't in my van when someone broke in in December 16. They couldn't resist my Christmas gifts. Uh, I guess, among other things, uh, it, I wish it was as easy as replacing a window. This is a topic that doesn't get much coverage. Yes, break-ins are very common. I, I walk around the streets of Manassas here, and I see shattered glass in the streets all over the place where somebody probably whapped up and, you know, stole something out of a car. Yeah. you got to be very careful. Don't leave any valuable possessions in your car, or don't leave them in sight where someone can see them, like, you know, around the dashboard and stuff like that. Park in a well-lighted area, in a busy area. You know, and that kind of thing. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's it's tough out there, especially if you're a nomadic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, All right folks. Uh, that ought to do it. Don't forget, I'm going to be doing a, a 7 p.m. live stream at 7 p.m. Eastern Time uh, today, December 28th, 2019. Okay? And that'll be my final live stream for 2019. And my last one from Manassas for the while. Anyway, all right, folks, thanks for watching. Blog Under.